For this recipe, we are using two pans of skinless and boneless chicken thighs. To begin, add in two tablespoons of soy sauce, about three tablespoons of olive oil, a medium-sized onion diced, six cloves of garlic minced, three teaspoons of chili paste, three tablespoons of honey, two teaspoons of ground ginger powder, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, two tablespoons of brown sugar, three tablespoons of fresh thyme, two tablespoons of fresh parsley, two tablespoons of cornstarch, and finally salt and pepper to taste. Go ahead and give that a toss until all the chicken has been evenly coated with the spices. Cover and keep in the fridge for at least two hours or overnight. And after a couple of hours, transfer the chicken into a large baking dish, spread it out to a single layer, preheat your oven to 425 degrees. Now bake at 425 degrees for 30 minutes. After baking for 30 minutes, Change your oven to broil and broil for about 5 to 7 minutes. And if everything goes according to plan, your honey garlic chicken should look like this. To finish it off, garnish with sesame seeds and green onions or scallions if you like. And now you are ready to eat. There you guys have it. Honey garlic chicken. Enjoy. Buen provecho. And thanks for watching. For this recipe, we are using two large chicken breasts. Cut them in half, just like so, to end up with four pieces. Feel free to remove any excess fat. Season with kosher salt, one teaspoon of garlic powder, and freshly ground black pepper to taste. Flip them over and season on both sides. Now, in a shallow dish, add in 4 tablespoons of all-purpose flour, followed by 4 tablespoons of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Go ahead and give that a quick mix. Then, dredge the chicken in the flour and coat it evenly. Once evenly coated, set it aside. Now, in a skillet over medium-high heat, add in 2 tablespoons of olive oil, followed by 2 tablespoons of butter, Transfer the chicken to the skillet and cook until golden brown on each side. That should be about 4 to 5 minutes per side, depending on the thickness of your chicken. Once the chicken has been cooked through and no longer pink, transfer onto a plate. Now, reduce the heat to medium and add in two more tablespoons of olive oil. Add in one small onion, diced, and saute until translucent. Then, add in 10 to 12 cloves of garlic, minced, and saute until fragrant, about a minute or so. 
Now we are adding two cups of chicken stock. Deglaze the pan by scraping the bottom with a spoon. Simmer and let it reduce to about half, about five minutes. Now reduce the heat to medium low and pour in one and a quarter cup of heavy cream. Add in half a cup of finely grated Parmesan cheese. Bring the chicken back into the skillet and simmer until the sauce has thickened. Once the sauce has thickened and the flavors have developed, add in some freshly ground black pepper. And now you are ready to eat. And what I love the most about this recipe is that you may serve over pasta, rice, potatoes, or anything you want. And to finish it off, garnish with fresh Italian parsley, if you like. There you guys have it, creamy garlic chicken breast. Enjoy, buen provecho, and thanks for watching. For this recipe, we're using two pounds of boneless and skinless chicken thighs. You may trim most of the excess fat, then cut them into bite-sized pieces, about one to one and a half inch cubes. Now, in a large mixing bowl, add in three cups of all-purpose flour, one cup of cornstarch, one tablespoon of salt, and one teaspoon of white pepper. Then whisk to incorporate once incorporated, add in one large egg, about one and a half to two cups of water. Then whisk to combine. We want the batter to look like a pancake batter. If you need to add more water, do so in small increments until you get it to the right consistency. Once the batter looks like a pancake batter, then it is ready for the chicken. Then add the chicken to the batter and toss until evenly coated. Now, cover the chicken and refrigerate for at least 30 minutes. Now, in a saucepan over medium heat, add in half a cup of orange juice, followed by half a cup of sugar, two tablespoons of regular soy sauce, one and a half teaspoon of paprika, half a cup of oyster sauce, one tablespoon of hoisin sauce, then whisk to incorporate all the ingredients, now, combine 1 tablespoon of cornstarch with 3 ounces of rice wine vinegar. Mix into a slurry, add it to the sauce and bring the sauce to a gentle simmer. Continue whisking for about 5 minutes until the sauce thickens. After the sauce has thickened, remove from the heat and set it aside. And after 30 minutes, in a Dutch oven, add in about 6 cups of vegetable oil. Over medium-high heat, heat up the oil to 375 degrees. The magic number is 350 degrees, but as soon as you add the chicken, the temperature is going to drop. That's why we're heating up to 375. Then fry in batches about 6 to 8 minutes until crispy and golden brown. Once this chicken has been cooked, transfer into a wire rack. 
And now, to assemble, set a large skillet over high heat and add in 2 tablespoons of vegetable oil. Once the oil is hot, add in 2 cloves of garlic, minced, followed by 2 teaspoons of minced ginger. Give that a quick stir and add the fried chicken. Add in half a large onion, diced, and about 2 to 3 scallions. Give that a quick toss. Add the orange chicken sauce and coat the chicken evenly in the sauce. Stir until all the ingredients are evenly coated, about 2 minutes. And that is it! You may serve over rice and enjoy! I like serving it with steamed broccoli and rice on the side. And to garnish it, I use sliced green onions. And now you are ready to eat my orange chicken better than takeout. For this recipe, we are using 4 skinless and boneless chicken breasts. Cut the chicken breast in half lengthwise so you end up with 8 thin chicken cutlets. Pound each cutlet in a freezer bag into 1 8 of an inch thick. Now, season both sides of the chicken with garlic, salt, and freshly ground black pepper, both to taste. Then, place one tablespoon of pesto sauce on each chicken cutlet. Place two thin slices of tomatoes on each. Then, top it off with fresh mozzarella cheese. Now, go ahead and roll each cutlet just like so. And to ensure that they do not open up, go ahead with a toothpick and shut them close. Now, using a cast iron skillet over medium high heat, add in 1 tablespoon of oil, followed by 1 tablespoon of unsalted butter. As soon as the butter has melted, transfer the chicken to the skillet, toothpick side up. We are going to sear the chicken 4 minutes per side. For a total cooking time of 8 minutes on the stove. Meanwhile, preheat your oven to 425 degrees. Once the chicken has seared on both sides, add in 1 cup of cherry tomatoes. Then we are topping them off with shredded pepper jack cheese. Now transfer the skillet to the preheated oven and bake at 425 degrees between 13 to 15 minutes or until the internal temperature reaches 165 degrees. And if everything goes according to plan, your chicken pesto roll-ups should look like this. Oh, and one more thing. Do not eat the toothpicks. Please remove the toothpicks before serving. You may garnish with fresh basil if you like. And now you are ready to eat. There you guys have it. Chicken pesto roll-ups, 
enjoy buen provecho and thanks for watching For this recipe, we're using three chicken breasts, boneless and skinless. Using a sharp knife, go ahead and cut them in half, just like so. Then, place the half in a freezer bag. Pound the chicken to a half inch thickness so it cooks evenly. Now, in a large mixing bowl, add in one and a half cups of buttermilk followed by one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, one tablespoon of hot sauce, one teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. Then give that a quick mix until evenly incorporated. Now transfer the chicken into the marinade Then keep in the fridge and let it marinate for at least two to four hours. A few hours later, now in a shallow bowl, add in one and a half cups of all purpose flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of paprika, two teaspoons of salt, and one teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. Then whisk until thoroughly combined. Remove one piece of chicken from the marinade at a time and coat in the flour mixture. Ensure that every part of the chicken has been evenly coated in the seasoned flour. Once the chicken has been evenly coated, transfer into a wire rack. Follow the same process with the rest of the chicken. Now, using a Dutch oven, heat up about 2 inches of vegetable oil to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Add in 2 pieces of chicken at a time. You don't want to crowd the pot. Also, you don't want the temperature of the oil to reduce too quickly and to get it super crispy. Dress the chicken one last time into the seasoned flour right before frying. Place the chicken into the oil one by one. Cook three to four minutes on the first side or until browned and crispy. Then flip and cook for another two to three minutes. Or until the chicken has been cooked through and it is brown and crispy all over. The internal temperature should be 165 degrees. Once the chicken has been cooked, transfer into a clean wire rack. Ensure that the temperature of the oil remains at 300 to 325 degrees. The wire rack will guarantee that your chicken will stay crispy. Now, lightly butter your buns and toast. To your toasted buns, add mayo on both sides. To build up the sandwich, the first layer would be pickles, followed by lettuce and tomato. Place the fried chicken on top of the tomato. You may top it off with cheese if you love cheese, like me. And now you are ready to eat. There you guys have it, the best crispy chicken sandwich ever. Enjoy, buen provecho, and thanks for watching. For this recipe, we're using two pounds of boneless and skinless chicken thighs. You may trim most of the excess fat then 
cut them into bite sized pieces, about one to one and a half inch cubes. For the marinade, add in five cloves of garlic minced, one tablespoon of minced ginger, one and a half teaspoon of garam masala, one teaspoon of turmeric, one teaspoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of red chili powder, one teaspoon of kosher salt, and one cup of plain yogurt. Now toss until all the spices have been evenly distributed. Now cover and transfer to the fridge and let it marinate for at least one hour. Meanwhile, let's make some white rice. We are making some jasmine rice. Make sure to rinse the rice under water before cooking. Add the rinsed rice into the rice cooker. Fill up with cold water. We are making three cups of rice. Therefore, we're filling it up to the line where it says number three inside the pot. Season with a pinch of salt. Then close the lid and press the white rice setting. Easy peasy. And after about 35 minutes, you'll have perfectly cooked white rice every single time. Now, in a skillet over medium high heat, add in two tablespoons of canola or vegetable oil. Once the oil is hot, add the pieces of chicken to the skillet. You may need to do this in batches as to not overcrowd the pan. Fry the chicken for about 3 minutes per side or until golden brown. Then remove the chicken from the skillet and set it aside. Once the chicken is out of the skillet, reduce the heat to medium. Now, to make the sauce in the same skillet, add in 2 tablespoons of butter. Once the butter has melted, add in 1 large onion, diced. Sauté the onion until translucent, you know the drill. Then, add in 5 cloves of garlic, minced. Sauté until the garlic becomes fragrant. Then, add in 1 tablespoon of ginger, minced. 1 teaspoon of paprika. One and a half teaspoon of garam masala, one and a half teaspoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of ground coriander, one teaspoon of red chili powder, and one teaspoon of kosher salt. Now toss to wake up the spices. Then add in a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. Cook off the tomatoes for a few minutes to reduce the sauce. Let the sauce simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. Once the sauce has been reduced to about half, add in one and a quarter cups of heavy cream. Go ahead and mix to incorporate. Bring the sauce to a gentle simmer. Then bring the chicken back into the skillet. Continue simmering for another 8 to 10 minutes or until the chicken has been cooked through. And to finish it off, garnish with fresh cilantro. Serve over white rice and I think now you are ready to eat. There you guys have it, easy creamy chicken tikka masala. Enjoy, buen provecho, and thanks for watching. For this recipe, we are using two skinless and boneless chicken breasts. Cut your chicken breast open sort of like a butterfly, just like so. Then cover with plastic wrap. Using a meat tenderizer, pound down the thicker part of the chicken until you get an even chicken breast. Now season with a pinch of kosher salt and freshly ground black pepper and do this on both sides. 
Then in a shallow dish, add in two large eggs, about one tablespoon of fresh parsley, a quarter of a cup of freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano, a pinch of salt and freshly ground black pepper to taste. Now whisk to incorporate, whisk, whisk, whisk. Then in another dish, add in half a cup of all-purpose flour. Season the flour with freshly ground black pepper to taste. Give that a quick whisk. Dress your chicken in the flour. Then transfer to the egg mixture and coat evenly. Repeat the same steps with the other chicken breast. Keep the chicken breast in the egg mixture until ready to cook. Now, in a skillet over medium high heat, add in 4 tablespoons of olive oil, followed by 2 tablespoons of butter. Once the butter has melted, transfer the chicken into the skillet and cook for about 4 minutes per side. Once the chicken has been cooked for about 4 minutes per side and is golden brown, transfer onto a plate. Now in the same skillet, still over medium high heat, add in 1 cup of white wine. Ensure to deglaze the bottom of the skillet by scraping the bottom, just like so. Then add in 1 cup of chicken stock the juice of half a lemon. Bring to a simmer and let it reduce for about 3 minutes. Once the sauce has been reduced, add in 1 tablespoon of fresh parsley, followed by 1 garlic clove minced. Give that a quick mix and cook off the garlic for about 30 seconds. Then add in 2 tablespoons of butter. Once the butter has melted, bring the chicken back into the skillet and cook in the sauce for about 1 minute per side. Using a spoon, coat the chicken in the sauce. Now transfer onto a plate and serve. Yo, check this out, I think now you are ready to eat. There you guys have it, chicken franchise. Enjoy, buen provecho, and thanks for watching. Bye.